Okay, a couple stories for you involving Valorant, a video game by Riot to replace CSGO, involving uh, just a couple other things about Twitch drops and the issues there with how they manipulated the community and their own platform to make up for the uh, recent shortcomings they've been facing. I'm talking about Twitch, of course, but let's start with this story. That'll kind of open the gate into the rest of the stuff we're going to talk about with Valoran executive producer will not solo queue because of the harassment that women face. Earlier this year, a community survey of League of Legends players found that 80% of them had been harassed after a match. Oh, boo-hoo, I played a match and then I got harassed. <clears throat> what? In a manner ranging from outbursts of obscenities and repeated friend requests to almost exclusively for players who identify as a woman. Harassment. Really now? Really? And listen to what they say next. Unsurprisingly, while slightly more men than women reported being the target of general abuse, Abuse, you see what they're doing here. Now look at what the executive producer, whoever of Valorant shared. It's just dumb. You see how I'm top ranking? Like, do you find that attractive at all? Like, I don't know. I'm looking for Negro. Are you 16 years old? Yeah, but I'm like. So those, this is their idea of harassment. He said, "Do you find something attractive?" It wasn't even bad. And she says, "Yeah, are you 16?" Six I'm like. He says, "Yeah, but I'm 65." I am like. And I'm hella buff. Ten years too old for you, then. Uh, I'm actually 23. Let me skip ahead. Nothing bad happens there, yeah. but... Sure, then. Hey, John, great. Okay, babe. Okay, babe. <laughs> he said, okay, babe. There you go. I think he's being a dick. He's not being nice. He's being a little bit pervy or something, but he just said, okay, babe, and there you go. Now, I get it. It's dumb. It's bad, but we get the same thing. Males do too. So that's the Valorant, Valorant exec, executives uh, sharing that. It seems stupid, right? But that leads me into the criticism I've been wanting to go into for a while around Twitch, their drops, and Valorant uh, Riot games. Not the game itself, because I do think Valorant will be fun. I'm going to play it. I'm just saying... You know, we've got these types of execs, and you know what they're doing here. But Valorant's beta key craze is causing problems on Twitch. So what are the problems? Well, Devin Nash has been sharing how bot accounts came in, inflated, fake inflated Twitch's numbers, view count, watch time, screwed the, the advertisers, and, and basically made it seem like Twitch was experiencing the biggest watch time and views it's experienced in a very long time. But if you look... Especially at a clip like this, it's all fake. It's all fake. It's all bots. I'm sure there's a lot of real people there. I would say at least 70% are bots and fake accounts farming the keys because the keys have been selling for upwards of 100, 150, and $180. And they sell. Take a listen. Take a take a listen. Take take a take a listen. Here it is. Because a vast majority of these people are alternate account. Like, if I go into this fucking stream right now, which isn't even a real stream, by the way, and then I go in here and I go look at the user list, right? Like, and I search for, like, Valorant. Wow. ACC for Valorant 1. ACC for Valorant 10. ACC for... Do these look like fucking legitimate users? Like, very clearly they're not. No, they're not, my friend. And this is prevalent over all the Valorant streams. Now, Valorant started out making you have to watch specific streamers. The big ones, the shills. I, I won't call them all shills. I don't think they are. I love Shroud. I love Dr. Disrespect. I'm not trying to hate. I, I love Summit. I'm not saying they're shills. I'm just saying they kind of shilled out for Valorant. But who wouldn't? I don't blame them. You get me? It's Valorant's fault. It's Riot's fault that they locked it to these top streamers when it should have been under the category. Now, that's eventually what they did after gatekeeping it to certain streamers, their numbers going up to 300,000 or 250,000 concurrent viewers for this game and creating the fake hype. As j that, Now, if you look, that is an enormous amount of bots. Those are enormous. You try to compare the real looking names or the amount of people chatting to the amount of bots you see. There's obviously 80, 70, 80% bots. Got me? As Devin Nash points out, an enormous amount of fake Twitch accounts have been created in order to farm beta drops. It's resulted in a massively inflated viewership stats clearly caused by bots and phony accounts. 
Additionally, fake streams and channels have popped up too, all taking advantage of the Lawrence beta craze. The platform feels ravaged by the waves of viewers, bots, fake accounts that all have swarmed the streams for the sole purpose of trying to get into the game. Many individuals don't stop at one drop. They try to get as many accounts as possible in order to sell them online for crazy money. As much as $175 and it's sold. They all sell for a lot. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you do it? If you could just sit on Twitch, get a few of those drops, go and sell a couple of them for over a hundred. You've made one of them selling is a good day's pay. Do it every day. Do one one sell a, one sell a day, and you're good, right? You could just, especially imagine the people that got like twenty or imagine the people with a hundred bots who each get one of those keys. Let's say fifty percent of them get keys. That's <laughs> That's a lot of money, man. We're talking about 5,000 bucks just for 50 bots, and there were tens, if not more, uh, hundreds, even thousands of bots. There were so many. Ten there was at least, let's, I won't even go into it, man. It's just so bad. Streamers have been less sincere since the beta, cashing in on the ridiculous exposure that Valorant brings in. Want you uh, to quadruple your viewerships? Stream Valorant with drops enabled in your title. Some users have even had their newly inflated stats to attempt to secure lofty sponsorship deals. Pokey Lulz, one of the first big streamers to candidly express his distaste in the environment, brought excuse me, brought by the new beta. At least some of them are speaking out. What did he say? Let's hear it. This drop shit is stupid, dude. It's not fun. No, it's bad. It's horrible. It only is in favor of the bigger streamers, and they're all they, they get just a bunch of fake accounts. I know. I'm I'm just complaining now. <laughs> Go ahead, dude. What do you guys want to do? Fuck drops, dude. Literally, everyone there is just streaming for views. It's not fun. I thought it'd be fun, dude. Fuck. Dude, at least you're real. I might go follow you. Actually, I don't watch Twitch, so I can't. The future of Valorant is up in the air. The consensus is it will likely succeed as CSGO alternative. That's just because people think people see these numbers and they say to themselves, have you ever watched a Valorant video? Look, I'm not saying it's going to be a bad game, but it's not exciting to watch. I'd rather watch CSGO than Valorant. And why do we want, look, you're sitting there casting these spells and cast doing this. And do it. It's just not, I mean, it's just not, doesn't look good. It just looks stupid. It looks like they tried to imitate Fortnite. They put they tried to do like a Fortnite for CSGO and God help us. It will be so boring on YouTube and, and everywhere else if Valorant blows up. But it's going to blow up and it's going to be boring. And I'll be sitting there with, at least with the Battle Royale. It's exciting. You get me? PUBG was, PUBG was, that was the time. That was the good old days, right? Because you actually had people that were, it's all a skill-based game. Yeah, you got to run around for a few minutes with nothing happening, but that just builds the excitement for those fights that pop off, you know? Anyway, I'm just bitching at this point, so I'm going to end, end this recording. Thank you for watching. Oh, 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 I almost forgot this time. I re-recorded it because I forgot. I got to do these last two. Anyway, you heard about the controversy with Dr. Disrespect on Valorant Drops, and I love Dr. Disrespect, but let's take a quick look here. The first week of Valorant has gone as well for right. And this is not a new story, but the community is engaged by playing fervently, but watching Twitch streams for hours on end. While some of the viewership can be attributed to players trying to learn the game, most of it comes from drop hungry users. So I wonder, do you think people watching for drops watch the game? No, they don't. They probably just turn it on, mute it, and wait for their key. Riot teamed up with Twitch to give a lucky viewer the closed beta. It's been done allowing certain streamers to enable drops. Well, one famous streamer, Dr. Disrespect, advised that he had drops but didn't. And what was his uh, response? That we're upset that I had drops enabled on my stream title. We'll go back. Last week and... I should probably step up. And be a man about the situation. A lot of people were upset. News outlets picked it up. Kotaku, GameStop. So, I would like to officially put out an official response. It's good, dude. I don't give a fuck. I love it. I love it, Doc. I love it. Tell him, Doc. You're looking at the best in the business, baby. You think I give a fuck? <laughs> oh, 
that's why I love Dr. Disrespect. That's why I love him. Give them that middle finger, my dude. And then, look at this. Fallout 76 new robot loves communism a bit too much for some players. Even if he love it a little, it's too much for me. Fallout 76 might have been improved by the Wastelanders update. Really? You think so? No, it isn't. But it's still getting up to its old tricks. First, there was an issue with the new NPC stealing weapons from dead players. And now there's a robot whose obsession with communism is getting in the way of its job. A new Collectron was introduced last week alongside of the communist-themed goodies that you can purchase from the in-game shop. Like all of these diligent robots, the Collectron is meant to go out and gather stuff for its owner, including food, water, weapons, and grenades. But it's far more interested in stuffing the Collectron station with communist propaganda. Now, <laughs> is this a serious story? What's going on, Bethesda? Really? Some players on the subreddit aren't too chuffled over their mechanical servant would rather shower them in leaflets than provide them with fancy weapons. Frankly, though, you get what you pay for. You can't expect to buy a robot whose sole identifying feature is that it gets the hots for marks and then gets upset when it follows through. Uh, yes, you can. Yeah, because it's actually not supposed to do that. It's supposed to just walk around and collect stuff for you. If there was ever a reason to be... A little bit on edge about Bethesda. Now you got another one. <laughs> Other players have taken the robot side, noting the players have taken issue when Bethesda has added in-game enhancing stuff to Cash Shop previously. It's interesting to see that there are actually people here disappointed that an item exclusive to the Atom Shop doesn't give them a bigger in-game advantage, wrote one player, when usually there's a massive outcry about in-game power being added to the shop. When Fallout 76 launched, Bethesda told players it would only sell cosmetic items in the Atomic Shop, but quickly backpedaled and introduced premium repair kits. The decision was criticized. As it should be, when there's not much to do in a game already and it's stupid, why do you want to skip parts of the game? And it's like, hey, let me pay you to skip the game, please. It's so dumb, dude. The decision was criticized, but Bethesda argued that they didn't give players a competitive advantage and they were just a utility item. Oh, sure, Bethesda. So everybody else has to go out and collect those types of items to repair their stuff, but if you give them money, it'll just fix all your stuff, and that's not a competitive advantage. Oh, no, it's not like your weapons actually do worse when they're not repaired. It's not at all. Hey, they just lie, dude. Using this reasoning, it's since added a lot more utility items, including a $7 fridge. Almost always accompanied by complaints from players. I tend to agree that utility items like the Collectron shouldn't dole out lots of valuable weapons because then it starts to shift from a quirky addition to a necessity. Fallout 76 isn't a competitive game, but it's a shared experience, and splitting people up into haves and have-nots engenders can't talk. Envy and frustration, that said, I can also understand why somebody who purchased a Collectron with the expectation that it would give them new gear would... Be disappointed to find piles of communist leaflets instead. What you think? You think? This is crazy town. It appears to be working as intended, but the new Collectron is not without its bugs. Turns out turrets are no friends of communism and treating poor robot like an enemy. I bought the commie Collectron and now my turrets are all shooting it. One player complained. This one is a bug and it's being dealt with in the next patch. Cheers, Kotaku. Oh my goodness. What? in the world is this gaming what is gaming turned into why are we here i'm Audi. i gotta stop bitching see you later let me know what you think down in the comments below if you want to like the video that'd be cool but you don't have to and i'll see you in the next one